This is the way you do video at a television station with highly skilled operators and very expensive equipment. But computers are turning video into an affordable, personal art form, thanks to new products like Apple's QuickTime and New Tech's Video Toaster. Even the PC platform is becoming video friendly. Today, we'll take a look at the latest in computer video on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles has been made possible in part by PC Connection and Mac Connection, mail order software and hardware peripherals for the PC and the Macintosh, and the Software Publishers Association, providers of educational materials to help manage software. Don't copy that floppy. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffe, and with me this week is Lou Wallace, Senior Technology Editor with Amiga World Magazine. Lou, we have a video toaster here, but this is a Macintosh. What's going on? Well, there's two things going on here, Stuart. New Tech has completely overhauled the video toaster software this year. Version 2.0 uh -huh. has a wide range of new effects, action wipes and transitions, as well as new animation features and so forth. They've also added interoperability, where you can control the video toaster from a Macintosh hmm. under Windows or, of course, under uh, Amiga DOS. Okay, let's let's take a look at 2.0 toaster. We've got two live cameras. There's camera one, let's say over there, pointed to me. Camera two, pointed to you. And we're in real time here, so let's try some of these effects. Try the blood here. I'm okay. a horror movie fan, that, so that's, that's one a of my blood favorites. effect. And we'll go down here, click auto, and the dripping blood. Now, if that was red, that would be much more. <laughs> that effective. would be pretty neat. All right, what is this one? This is water pouring. Okay, and, and we'll go over here. Put that say medium speed. Yes. Oh, that's neat. Yeah, these are very very high end okay, powerful now, effects. Windshield wiper. Let's take a look at that one. That very, clears things up, absolutely. Very nice, very nice. Okay, let me go to the other bank. Which ones are good here? Is this... This is a smoke effect. A smoke effect. Let's try that. The, this would require very high-end, very expensive video gear to reproduce. Um, and the video toaster does it, of course, for a fraction of the cost. There's another smoke coming down, I guess, is what that mm -hmm. is there. Yep. Again, based upon fractal mathematics. Yeah, uh, what, one more. This is... This, this is clouds. Clouds. It's one of my favorites. Fast speed. Oh, yeah, that is neat. Okay, well, we're going to look at desktop video on all three platforms today, the Amiga, the Macintosh, and the PC. Now, most desktop video producers do work with one computer system, but at Kaiser Permanente Hospital in Oakland, California, we found a video department that uses Amigas, Macs, and PCs to produce training tapes for patients and staff. It's a result of an accident. The audio-visual department at Kaiser Hospital first got into computer video when they bought a PC equipped with a Targa video board. We started using that as a slide-making package, um, and since the Targa is inherently a, a NTSC video, it was easy to just uh, drop those graphics to videotape. So we started with that, then we moved into the Macintosh platforms, um, again, to do graphics and slides. Um, and then just within the last year, we purchased the Amiga Toaster. With the ability to work on any platform and use all the best software, the AV people at Kaiser are able to produce state-of-the-art videos for training their staff and for educating patients. The producers here got into computers originally because they wanted to incorporate sophisticated graphics into their productions. The graphics that we've started in integrating really help um, sort of illustrate things that would be difficult to to show on video um, because they would either be too uh, kind of bloody or gruesome or um, if they were described medically they may be too remote or um, difficult to understand to a layperson. The graphics in this video on women and HIV were created on the PC. The graphics and special effects in this tape on reconstruction surgery were done on New Tech's video toaster. The original pictures were scanned into a Macintosh and processed using Mac software. Even though Kaiser Hospital is just doing training videos, they've discovered that their patients and even the doctors expect professional quality productions. I think that um, a lot of the physicians now that, that are working with us are requesting more and more graphics because um, they, they, they see it more, I think, in their work and also just in the media in general. Um, so they're starting to understand how to use graphics, not just for their own um, 
um, learning, but also to help the patient. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Maria Gabriel. For many years, the Commodore Amiga was the computer of choice for video makers, and while the Macintosh and the PC can now do video, the Amiga has not stood still. Here to show us the latest video toys for the Amiga is Lou Wallace again. Lou, what about the Amiga? Is it still ahead of the game? Can you do more with an Amiga even today than you can with a Mac or a PC in video? Yeah, you really can. Obviously, all the different computers are aiming and heading toward the video market, but the Amiga's been there longer, and therefore the products that are there are more mature and stable. In addition, more video companies are starting to produce products designed for the desktop and specifically for the Amiga. Uh -huh. For example, this is the DQ Taco from DiaQuest, which is a single frame controller for animators. Normally, these things would cost several thousand dollars. This is under a thousand dollars. Uh, another example is time-based correctors. This is one called the Kitchen Sink from Digital Cre uh, Creations, uh -huh. and uh, this is a two-channel time-based corrector. Uh, two channels of TBC could cost you anywhere from five to ten thousand dollars in the video market. This is available for under two thousand uh -huh. dollars. Works for the Amiga and the PC. What's the other box you have? This is a, a really neat one. This is a very low-cost chroma key from Microsearch, under four hundred dollars. It allows anyone, even with a home VCR, to and a video camera, to do, do chroma, uh, to key. chroma key, wow. you know, for really fun effects and birthday parties and things like All that. All right, now there's another board you have in inside this Amiga 3000, which is called the Impact Vision 24. What does that do? Well, the Impact Vision 24 from uh, Great Valley Products is a multifunction video card. It allows you to do frame grabbing, digitizing, uh, gin locking, RGB composite out to tape or to the right, Amiga screen. Show me what you mean. Well, for, you see I have the uh, Amiga workbench up uh -huh. here. By hitting the key, I can toggle it into an overlay mode. So I'm overlaying the Amiga graphics and display, whether, whatever that are, animation paint, mm -hmm. whatever on top of the video signal. I can also uh, play at full screen. Of full course, video. this is a 24-bit, 16 million color card. Oh, yeah. Now I can grab frames by just free, uh, hitting a button, freezing mm -hmm. them. Save them off the disk. Those can be used in the included paint programs or 3D modeling yeah. or presentation software. You can also do some nice things like uh, video in a window, uh -huh. which is resizable and movable. Moving around. And uh, I use this with a PC VCR to watch the game, the news, and, <laughs> uh -huh. and never, never uh, uh, sitcoms uh, on my desktop. <laughs> so w one of the things that comes with it is yeah. a product called Scala, which is a presentation package. And I have that loaded up in the background. Uh, this allows you to very easily point and click and pre uh, create um, presentation graphics for video titling or, or whatever you're interested in. I'm going to grab just a simple uh, uh, background mm -hmm. image of a book, and I'll add some text up here. Now I can do a lot of things with this, uh, including correct the spelling, <laughs> um, okay. and I can change it to like a 3D look, uh -huh. and play with the color and so forth. Um, change I fonts. Change fonts, shadowing, add a different font here, um, and mm -hmm. do whatever I want with it. Now, yeah, just because we only have a couple minutes, uh -huh. I'm going to load up something, a script that I've already prepared to show you some of the, the digital video effects that can be included in your presentation. Uh, here's one. And let's run that. Now here you see I'm, it, it's putting text on the screen. It's using various transitions and mm -hmm. wipes to, to go from one page to the next. And those backgrounds are coming out of the Scala software? That's right. And you can create a background with any paint program, digitizer, uh -huh. or, or whatever you want. And there's just a wide variety of these things that you can use. Uh, I've got this set up to randomly run through them. Right. and. Uh, we're doing now, could I be using the Scala software to be do to, to do titling over that video which you brought in Absolutely before? Absolutely, can. Yes, you just set yourself up with a background uh, color zero image, and whatever you put up on the screen will be yeah. overlaid on top of the video. All right, Lou, you have the IV24 inside an Amiga 3000. Now, there's all kinds of Amigas out there: 500, 1000, 2000, 3000. Is one of these the ideal video platform? It, it, yeah, they are. If you're going to use the video toaster, which we saw yeah. earlier, then right now you want to use the 2000. Though uh -huh. you can use it with the 3000. If you're going to be doing video titling or character generation or the real-time graphics in the 3000 because of the speed and power of it's probably the mm -hmm. preferential choice. If you're on a budget and you just want to dress up your birthday videos, then an A500 with an inexpensive gen yeah. lock and titling program will work just fine. Now what level are we talking about here? I mean you showed me these boards. Is this home video or is this really professional video This now? is professional to industrial uh, video applications. I mean this is for people who are actually making a living with video uh -huh. or they're doing presentations for corporations and so forth. Uh, it's, it's, it's real video gear. Okay. Lou, thank you very much. Well, in the same way that desktop publishing spawned a whole new industry of graphics service bureaus, desktop video has led to video service bureaus. We visited one called the Pacific Media Center in Santa Clara, California. The problem with producing your own video is it can be very expensive if you have to buy all the computer equipment you need. 
The solution is the Video Service Bureau. Video has always equaled expensive. With camcorders, uh, that formula has, has changed. Editing at $200, $300 an hour has always been a, um, a barrier. Uh, and so what we've tried to do is at least provide something uh, down in the, the $50 an hour range where people can, can take advantage of the editing themselves. The Pacific Media Center says it is the first desktop video service bureau in the country. It offers its clients Macintosh workstations with digital FX hardware for controlling analog editing equipment. They also use software from digital FX and some software they developed on their own called Soft FX. The Macs here have True Vision New Vista Plus and DiaQuest boards built in so the users can export graphics to video and also record frame by frame animation. That equipment is pretty expensive for us, so we didn't want to bring it in house. We don't need it all the time, we don't use it all the time. So we want to be able to have a service bureau like this where we can come and use it on a as uh, needed kind of basis. The equipment here is not the same kind that's used by television stations and broadcast production houses, but it is still expensive. The minimum computer system needed to run digital FX, for example, is a Mac 2 with 8 megabytes of RAM, a 40 megabyte hard drive, and an 8-bit RGB monitor. You also need two VCRs, a video monitor, plus the $10,000 video FX system. But the key to success at a video service bureau is not only low cost, but ease of use. In order for the service bureau to succeed, we really had to have a easy to use system for people to come in because these are novices that are com coming in. The video FX system from Digital FX is, is great because it's, it's fully integrated, but it is also driven by the Macintosh uh, user interface. So it's really easy to use. We find people coming in uh, no experience whatsoever in, in editing or video, and they're up to speed in editing away in, in a couple of hours. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Maria Gabriel. The hottest new development in desktop video is Apple's QuickTime and the new video products that make use of it. Here to show us the video Spigot and Premiere are John Carter of Super Mac and Tim Myers of Adobe Systems. First of all, John, tell us about QuickTime. This is reasonably new. What is mm -hmm. QuickTime? What, what is it that enables us to do these video things now on a Mac? Well, QuickTime is a really exciting announcement by Apple that allows hardware and software manufacturers such as Super Mac and Adobe mm -hmm. to build products that can treat video essentially in the same way that text and graphics and pictures are used on the Macintosh seamlessly integrated from application to application. It means that people with ordinary desktop computers can now start using video to communicate, to present, uh, using just the tools they have in their home or their business. All right, so what you've done at Super Mac is come up with this board mm -hmm. called the Video Spigot, which does what? Video Spigot is a video capture card. The okay. first thing you have to do, of course, before you start thinking about creating a video presentation is to take live footage. Uh -huh. Now, this could come from a video camera, mm -hmm. such as a, a regular 8mm uh, camcorder. Right. It could come from a VCR, or in the business, it might be a laser disc. Video Spigot is a board that allows you to simply take the output of those devices and pour uh -huh. uh, video into right. your Macintosh as fast as it can come. Once it's in there, it's in digital form, it's on disk, you can work with it using any QuickTime compatible application. All right, now we're going to do that now, right? You want to put a piece of video inside the Macintosh. Right, we're going to do something a little ambitious. We're going okay. to try and actually create a video clip here in the studio okay. live. And uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this uh, camera we have okay, over so here. Okay, so we've got a little Sony 8 millimeter camera. It's a regular 8 millimeter camera, and we, we just plugged into here. the video spigot. Okay. Uh, I'm going to pull down the uh, uh, the application here that we uh, use to control the video spigot. Okay. And you can see it's a little window. And it's there, in, there we are. It's in live okay. mode right now, so you okay. can see uh, it's right. just uh, previewing uh, what mm -hmm. we're seeing. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the go button, then I'm going to ask yeah. you to um, uh, do, do a little uh, acting, and let's let's say okay. that you're role-playing presentation of uh, Computer Chronicles in a rather unusual setting, the, the Winter Olympics, for okay. example. Okay. And then uh, what we're going to do is we're going to show how we can take that video okay. and drop in behind you scenes of people skiing and so on. It's going let's to be a very exciting clip. Okay, tell me when you're ready. All right, let's uh, action. All right, this is what our set might look like if we were doing a special Computer Chronicles show on the Winter Olympics in 1992.
Okay, so I'm going to hit the uh, stop button here. So you just recorded that? I just did record that, and okay. it went straight to disk. It's now a digital format, and okay. you can see that. For example, if I pull the slider backwards and forwards, we can go to any point in the clip. Now, of course, this is much easier than the tedious process of scrolling through analog right, tape to try and right. find the part uh -huh. of the clip you're interested in. Um, I can play it back. I can stop, I can trim the in points and the out points to find uh, exactly the part of the clip that I want. Uh, we, want to, we want it before you start talking, there we go. We want the, uh, the out point when you're at uh, rest again. Let's not have the open mouth, there we go. Uh, near enough. Mm -hmm. And that's the clip that we're actually going to then uh, process, the whole clip. Um, if uh, another exciting thing you can do, of course, with digital form of video is at any point, if there's a frame that I particularly like, mm -hmm. I can just grab you it, grab it yeah. I can move it off, and that's an image I can import into any graphics uh -huh, program, uh -huh. desktop publishing, and so on. All right, should we get Tim into the act now? Let's do that. All um, right, so we have Premiere, which is the software, which is going to play with these video images now, right? right? Okay, you can take over control here if you want, Great Tim, and tell me you. what you're going to do. So Adobe Premiere allows you to take all these raw clip time, uh, quick time movies that you may have saved to your hard disk. All right, hold on. Tell us what all these things are on the screen now. Well, what we're doing is we're si simply using System 7 right now to switch over to the software. Okay. So let me hide everything else. Okay. Now we've just got Premiere on the screen. And Premiere allows you to take quick time movies captured with boards like the Video Spigot mm -hmm. board or other quick time digitizing boards. It also allows you to integrate uh, animation sound files and still images, for instance, Photoshop images. And you can create backgrounds and titles and other effects. So on the left there, they are your video files. And so there's a still the, frame from each of those On the files? left, this is called uh -huh. my project window. And it shows okay. me basically the first frame of that clip. We call everything in Premiere a clip. Okay. And what I'm going to do is simply drag one of these pre-stored QuickTime clips out into my construction window. And my construction window is where I actually lay out my movie. And you can see I have a little thumbnail that represents an increment in time, and that's set down here. So I'm looking at one thumbnail for every half second of video. Mm -hmm. and what I'm going to do now is bring up a window of special effects and transitions, and I'm just simply going to choose one of these effects and drag it out into the overlapping area of these two segments of digital video. And I'll stretch it to cover the range there. And then I can preview this transition. Mm -hmm. So I'm creating a preview right now. It's storing these frames into the memory. We just transition memory. from one piece of video to another there. And you see the right. transition happening right. up here There's in the wipe. preview yeah. window. Okay. And now I can take this and I can substitute with other effects. Maybe I want to use this circle closing called an iris round. Mm -hmm. And notice these are animated so I can see instantly what exactly they do. It makes it very is. easy. Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to copy and now I can paste right into the <clears throat> existing transition mm -hmm. and then again I can preview and that just effect change now. the effect of the transition. Just change that effect. All right, now what are you going to do with, this, with, the, with the video you're building up now? Well, what I'd like to do now is take the clip that we used, uh, captured of you, okay. and I'd like to use a special technique called superimposing. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drag this out into my construction window, and I'll just slide it on over. Get this sound down here in the way. We'll slide it over just slightly so it sits right about at the edge of this clip here. And now I'm going to bring up a special superimposing window, and I'm going to crop out this background image that we didn't want in the picture. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to focus right in on this blue key mat behind you, because we're going to use that to actually define a transparency color. And you'll see as I slide this over, oh, all that blue oh, in the yeah, background yeah. begins to disappear. Mm. And now I'll just move this yellow bar, which is my preview bar, and so we can take a slight preview of you here chroma keyed against the background. This is what I've set my look like. Uh -huh. And now I've gone ahead and saved this as a QuickTime movie, this entire movie as a new QuickTime movie. Let me just go ahead and open that movie, and let's go ahead and play that on the screen. And you can see here I have all my standard VCR controls, mm -hmm. and now I'll just hit play, and we'll watch the final movie. So you're seeing all the kind of special effects that you could uh -huh. see on broadcast television, superimposed titles, masking. Uh, we have various and filters. There's the scene you just started putting together. There's a scene That's I just put transition. together. And then coming up. This is what our set might look like if we were doing a special show on the use of computers at the Winter Olympics in 1992. And there we have it, a quick time movie. You can <laughs> put, put it on a floppy disk. You can uh, put it onto CD-ROM, or you can transfer it over a network so it can yeah. be played on any Macintosh.
That's pretty impressive stuff. Gentlemen, thank you very much. All right, next up, a revolutionary new video product for the IBM PS2. Stay tuned. Up until now, you haven't thought of an IBM computer as a hot video machine, but watch this. Here to show us the new PS2 TV and the Action Media 2 board is Peter Blakeney of IBM. Stuart. Multimedia is a big thing now with IBM, isn't it? Multimedia is one of the most important initiatives that IBM has underway presently. We believe that the integration of video, sound, and new user interfaces such as touch will change the way we use information systems technologies in the 1990s. It, in fact, will change the way we work, the way we play, the way we entertain ourselves. All right, now the confusion between what's a television and what's a computer is sort of epitomized right here because it looks like we're watching television, but we're not quite watching television. Here, no, it's a new IBM Personal Systems 2 on which I have a Personal Systems 2 TV. That's this pancake that sits underneath the uh -huh. display. It is passing a signal through our cable feed into the PS2 and onto the display without impacting anything within the PS2 itself. There's mm -hmm. no board, there's no software impact, and in fact it allows me to play with that display just like I would um, a TV display. So there's no slot or anything inside the computer that's participating in this That's right correct. Now. Okay. So what can you do with this? Well, I can use it like I do my television at home. I can change the volume. You see the slide bar uh -huh. there. I can change the options on that so that I can change the contrast and the color. I'm going to mute that for a minute so mm -hmm. that we don't have to listen to. to and again, this is, this is a live TV picture. This, this is not a live video TV or picture that we're picking okay. up right now. I can change the settings so that I can pick up a signal off of um, any cable system that uh -huh. we have by scanning it through and uh, change from antenna or cable and do mm -hmm. additional fine tuning. Let me cancel those through. Now, as I said, what that does is provide us with an analog feed coming off our normal television signal. We can do video on the desktop in a variety of ways, mm -hmm. software, uh, using products such as Linkway Live or Storyboard Live or Audio Visual uh -huh. Connection. We can do hardware using a product we call the Emotion Video Adapter, which is a, a more professional tool. Or we can do digital video. Yeah, that's what I want to see next. Which uh, we have in this system. Let me describe the system for just a moment. This is a recently introduced IBM Ultimedia M57 SLC. Mm -hmm. Fully integrated 386SX technology, but uh, it's turbocharged with a cached memory. So rather than a 20 megahertz machine, you really end up with about a 36, 37 megahertz machine. It has an XGA graphics mm -hmm. board in it, a 16-bit audio an integrated CD-ROM, and of course control panels on the front for volume, microphone, and earphones, as well as a speaker. All right, Peter, show me how you would capture a video and actually get, right. it, as a digi get it as a digital file in your... What I'm TV. using is an Action Media 2 card jointly developed by IBM and Intel, uh -huh. uh, which allows me to take the video, let me open up a file, and capture it off a live feed. Now we're picking up another channel through the VCR that's sitting next to the PS2 there and I will record that. Let me move this screen over a bit. I'll turn on my monitor you, so you'll see the additional feed coming through there. Okay, so simultaneously we're watching what's coming out of the PS2 TV and what's coming out of this VCR going through the PS2. That's correct. Okay. And obviously I could change channels up here okay. at will as I'm doing that. So I could be right, watching a sports program or CNN while I'm doing that. All right, so will, you're going to capture that video for us. I will start a new file. I will establish a start and we'll take um, 10 or 15 seconds here so that um, we can make sure that we're recording the proper okay. Let me stop it. Let's see how much I recorded at that moment. That was uh, but eight seconds. That uh -huh. eight seconds took only 644 K, uh -huh. uh, because we're compressing at a rate of roughly 180 to 1 compression rate. Now let me... And can you play that, that piece of video back? I will play that back in just a moment. Let me establish a record for it. I'll just call it uh, ABC. And let me close that. Now, we have saved that mm -hmm. onto the hard file, compressed again at 180 to 1. I will open that up. By the way, I can do video stills as well while I'm uh, okay. through this program. 
I will call up that record on the mm -hmm. on the hard file, and once it's called up, then I can look in my file, and I put in oh, it's up underneath my PS2 TV. I put in ABC AVS, okay. which is what. And if you open that file, and I open that file, that's a piece of video we just recorded. Back. That's amazing. All right, we just have a couple of seconds left. You also have a CD player in here, right? Yes, I do. Let me close this up for a moment, and I'll show you the CD. You can play just like your home CD, and I'll just turn it on, and I can change the audio, change the fast, change the. And that's the little CD player right here. And I can eject it just like my CD at home. Yeah, we don't, we don't know what these machines are these days. Thanks very much, Peter. And that is our look at what's new in computer video. Stay tuned now for this week's computer news on Random Access. In the Random Access file this week, this is a special summer edition with the focus on software. The top 10 selling software titles last week for the Macintosh, according to Mac Connection, include Microsoft Excel 4.0 version upgrade in the number one spot. And rounding out the top 10 are Symantec's SAM and fifth generation Suitcase 2.1. Next up, Paul Schindler in our summer software review. People argue endlessly about the differences between the Apple Macintosh and Microsoft Windows. One clear advantage, the Mac has built-in sound. PC users had to live with tinny squeaks unless they bought a soundboard. Now there's Wired for Sound, which cleverly produces sounds for Windows events, like an error, or when the program displays a dialog box that makes a comment or asks a question. Some sounds may be more wearing than others after you've heard them a few dozen times. Wired for Sound also gives you an alarm clock. While not a full calendar, it does nag you when an appointment is coming up. You select when the alarm will sound, what the message will be, and what you will hear. Wired for Sound is $49 from Aristosoft in Pleasanton, California. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Paul Schindler. That's it for this week's Computer Chronicles. I'm Janelle Stelson. Computer Chronicles has been made possible in part by PC Connection and Mac Connection. Mail order software and hardware peripherals for the PC and the Macintosh. And the Software Publishers Association providers of educational materials to help manage software. Don't copy that floppy. Video cassette copies of this program are available. Computer Chronicles also publishes a companion newsletter containing details on products demonstrated, plus background information on program topics. To order a video cassette or a subscription to the newsletter, call 1-800-366-9484 or write Computer Chronicles. Please specify program subject for tapes. All orders include a free software program for auditing software use.